Welcome back to the last session for the day, day two of Kohakon. Um, we have two sessions this afternoon and the or two talks this afternoon and the first one is a lightning talk. So I will be inviting David Nind back to the stage for a um, quick introduction to using Open Refine for tidying up messy data and getting it ready to import into Koha. Thank you, David. Tenakoto Katoa. Um, greetings and welcome to you all. Um, apologies for those who have seen me do this talk before. Um, and I'll, I'll try and go through it as, as quickly as I can. Um, it's not going to be exciting as marketing to believers, um, but I don't, I've, library, librarians in particular, and, um, and most people I know have some messy data lying around somewhere. So um, now this isn't, you know, most of the support providers have lots of scripts and, and um, um, programs and processes to, to get your data nice and tidy out of your old systems and into your new systems. Um, and this isn't quite in the same league, but um, so in this example, you're going to take some messy data from an old system and use OpenRefine to tidy it up. So has anyone ever heard of OpenRefine? Some people have. So it originally started as a Google um, product, but now it's its own community. And um, yeah, it's the, that's really for tidying up messy data. Um, and I'm not a programmer, and I can't write scripts and things to take something and turn it into something else. So I'm just going to give a quick summary of how I used it quite a while ago. And, um, and then just work through some screenshots. I did think of doing a live demo, but that's, that's at this time of day, I thought that that's a bit of a step too far. Um, so we had an old system, and if that looks like a DOS program, then, then it, yes it is. <laughs> and um, when you, you could get the data out, but it was 56,000 rows of, there was a repeating row, repeating um, rows, but if you tried to tidy that up with anything I could find, um, yeah, it would have been taken a while. Um, so you do have to work out what the data is and if it's required. So in this case, there was it was quite easy to match it up with some nice columns. And I made a, mis a mistake in my presentation, and there should be a, sc a screenshot here of a nice spreadsheet with nice ordered columns and the data the way you want it. So you could just imagine the perfect data um, <laughs> sitting there ready for you to do what you want with it. <laughs> um, now there's some cool resources for OpenRefine before I go into the screenshot bonanza. Um, so there's obviously the OpenRefine website. Um, there's lots of things you can transform data, data in columns in OpenRefine. Um, and there's lots of, um, I, they call them recipes, but it's just ways of doing some of the common things like working with dates and turning text into numbers and, and uh, fiddling with ISBN numbers so that they're valid and things like that. Um, but the other resource I would recommend, if, if, if you have an carpentry instructors in your area like universities do and other people at library carpentry or, or uh, um, instructors, then if there's courses available in your area, then they're really worthwhile. Um, they make all their lesson plans free and um, available in an open source um, way, and, and it's step by step how to work through some of these. They're designed to be instructor-led, but um, they're really useful if you can't get along to those. So let's get started. So open refine is you run it locally, so your data doesn't go anywhere outside of there. Um, you start the program up and it opens up in your browser window. And you can get data from spreadsheets or lots of different formats. And you I didn't highlight that, but you browse and find the file that you want. And then it has a go at trying to identify um, what's 
what's in that source that you've you've tried to open. And it can work with lots of different formats, so not just spreadsheets, but text files and the, the normal stuff and JSON and um, I think you can scrape websites and you can do lots of, uh, even Mark, it can, it can open Mark, so, ooh. <laughs> um, but lots of different formats. But it has a go at trying to figure out what you want to do, um, what it is. Um, in this case, you could tell it, ooh, it's the result. But you could tell it to, you know, there it was just going to have lots of rows because that's how it was in the thing. You could say, oh, this, this stuff repeats every 27 lines and, um, yeah, it's turned it into a nice columns and um, you've got your data in there. So you create a, you then say, yep, that's what I want to do, and you create a project. Now what happens is it doesn't, um, alter wherever that source data comes from. It puts it into OpenRefine and it's totally separate so you're not touching your original data source which is quite good because then I don't know how many times I've started with the spreadsheet and might have fiddled around with it and saved it and overwritten the last one and I said, oh, I really mucked that up and I need to go back but you don't have SharePoint or version control or anything so anyway. Um, so yeah, it doesn't touch your original source and then Everything you do in OpenRefine, you can undo or you can replay if you want to go the other way as well. Cool. So, yay, we've got some data in here. It's in columns. Um, there's a few problems with some of this data, and we'll try and fix up a couple of them. Um, and we'll see what we can do. So instead of manually turning 56,323 lines in, into a nice spreadsheet, it did it straight away. It took me a couple of days to find a solution and I found OpenRefine, but it's neither here nor there. Um, and um, OpenRefine works on the idea of um, transforming what's in the columns. So you click on that column header and um, there's a lot of options. So this is a really simple one and obviously you can do this in a spreadsheet. But, you know, you can remove the column or you can um, join columns together um, quite nicely. So I don't have an example of doing that, but you can move them around. So sort of some of the normal spreadsheet uh, functions you might have. Um, and then a more trickier thing um, is, which you can obviously still do in spreadsheets, is um, that one of those columns, everything's in uppercase and this way because it was a DOS program and it didn't like lowercase or mixes or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I want that column three, I think it started off as, as a in sentence case, uh, in title case, sorry. Yeah, yeah, and then you just do that and it, yay, it's, that whole column, those 2,000 rows are all nicely in, up, in title case. So you could go and do that in, in all your rows. Now another interesting feature of this system, if you look at column two there, there's this long number and that's a Unix timestamp date, although it's on Windows so I don't know how that worked, but anyway. Um, so if you want to do some really advanced stuff, and I found, I searched and found this on the internet, so um, there's a function and you can use Python and other programming languages if you know those. So it has an inbuilt language um, and so that formula turns that timestamp uh, weird number into a proper date that I can understand. So that's really cool because there's lots, there's quite a few columns. Um, and on the left hand side there if you um, see there's not much of a history in here because I only did a couple of changes when I did the screenshot. It keeps a history on the left-hand side, so you can undo and and redo any of those actions you've done. And if you've got a repeating process, so you always get data in a particular way. Um, with the project, you can you can basically, you know, you've sorted out the process, and you can just make it repeat all those steps every time you open a new project. So. So you don't have to manually set up all these steps again. So, so I think that's really quite... I, I'm sure librarians don't get data that they have to repeat the same process over and over again to make it do something. But anyway. 
Um, and another cool feature that I quite like in my last 25 seconds is um, there's a, this thing called facets. So you can s select a column, and I didn't really show this properly, or did I? I didn't. Um, um, you can say that column three, which is um, authors, you can facet it by by that, and it will it will group them all together. Now these were like groups of one, but you can see Joseph E. Stiglitz is. Um, I'm sure librarians have never seen people. They use authority control, and uh, <laughs> everything's spelt right. Um, um, but say there was a hundred one was spelt right, and there was twenty wrong. You could just edit that, and it would fix them all up for you. And there's some other smart um, uh, faceting and things to try and help tidy up that things. So that's all I was really going to share. I've really only scratched the surface of what you can do if you're into wiki data and open data and exporting stuff and doing one weird and wonderful things with open data and other things. There's there's a huge number of other features in open refine. So so yeah, if you've got messy data and you want a free and open source software program that will help you with that and you're not a um, computer programmer who can't who doesn't know how to write all their scripts, then it's um, something really useful that you could use.